Hey guys, it's Malcolm here with Tech Crush, and today we're going to be talking about cell phones. Well, cell phone operating systems, to be specific, in your car, in your pocket, and soon to be directly into your eyeball. Seems like we can't get away from these things. The future is bright for the cell phone, but to get to know the cell phone a little bit better, let's travel back into the past to see the first true cell phone. In 1973, the world was a much larger place. President Nixon was inaugurated for a second term, the Vietnam War was coming to an end, and on April 3rd, 1973, Martin Cooper made the first cell phone call. Who did he call? He called his chief competitors at Bell Labs to ask how the reception was. In 1983, the Motorola Dynatech 8000 was the first commercially available cell phone. It had about 30 minutes of talk time and it could store about 30 contacts. Today, with an internal memory of 16 gigs, your phone could hold 1.14 billion contacts. Well, that's taking in consideration that there's nothing else on the phone as well. The Dynatech sold for about $3,995 in 1983. Adjusted for inflation, that would be about $9,200 today. The first true smartphone wouldn't make an appearance till about 1994. The Simon Personal Communicator is the first device that could properly be referred to as a smartphone, although the term hadn't been coined yet. Not only could it make and receive calls, it also had a full touchscreen and could send and receive fax and email. That's not bad for 1994. About 14 years after the Simon, the world would take a gigantic leap forward when Apple would release the original iPhone. On January 9, 2007, Apple launched the original iPhone. Apple really took a bite out of several different technologies that had been developed through the past years. Now I know what I'm about to say is going to make a lot of Apple fanboys angry, but Steve Jobs never really invented anything. Steve Jobs' true genius was innovating different ways of bringing several different technologies together in one clean, simple packet. In 1996, the Palm Pilot 1000 personal digital assistant was launched. It was strutting the first mobile operating system that was called Palm OS. Palm OS was one of the first mobile operating systems that was designed to use a full touchscreen based graphic user interface. Later in 2009, Palm OS would be modernized for its forthcoming device. It would eventually be something called Web OS. In 2002, BlackBerry launched its first phone, but in 2006, BlackBerry launched the Pearl 8100, the first BlackBerry to have multimedia features like music, a camera, and also a web browser. This could be considered by some to be the first modern day smartphone. It was a big success, it was affordable, and also it was very powerful. BlackBerry dominated the market after this without any competition for years. But with the arrival of the Apple iPhone in 2007, people stopped and seriously speculated that BlackBerry had its first true competitor. The iPhone was packing a powerful mobile browser, a full touchscreen interface, and also well-rounded multimedia capabilities. Apple also brought with it the first concept of a mobile app store. The iPhone was dubbed by the media, the BlackBerry killer. Finally, BlackBerry users peaked in 2010. They had about 22 million users. That was holding 37% of the market that was inside the United States at the time. In the coming years, competitors like Windows and Android would literally rip BlackBerry to pieces. It was the death of a giant. Now let's face it, you can't talk about the succession of smartphones without talking about the Apple iPhone. In 2004, Apple started to gather a team of a thousand employees to work on a highly confidential job codenamed Project Purple. Apple CEO at the time, Steve Jobs, was working in secret with Singular Wireless, which is now AT&T, to develop a really simple, clean smartphone. Over 30 months and $150 million later, they came up with what is now called the original iPhone. Initial sales and hype of the phone led people to call it the Jesus phone. It's weird. 
People lined up in front of stores for hours, sometimes days waiting for this phone's arrival. Apple sold 6.1 million units of its first iPhone. People speculate that the simplicity of the iPhone is to credit for its immense success. Also with the new concept of mobile apps, these things played a huge role in the immense success of the original iPhone. Love it or hate it, you have to admit, Apple changed the way we viewed phones in our lives. Now today, the most popular operating system is Android. It holds about 79% of the market. Android was founded in Pueblo Alto, California in October of 2003. It was founded by Andy Rubin, Rick Miner, Nick Sears, and Chris White. Now they didn't actually set out to create a mobile operating system. They actually set out to create an operating system for a digital camera. In 2005, Google would take notice of what it had funded and would buy up all of Android. The first phone to run the new Android operating system was the HTC Dream in October of 2008. The new Android operating system was based off of a Linux kernel, an open source operating system that allowed anyone to openly modify the source code. Though it was met with some criticism, the HTC Dream was overall considered to be an innovative game changer. And it was also considered the only real competition to the Apple iPhone that was suffocating the market at the time. As of today, over one billion Android smartphones have been activated. The operating system runs in almost everything from computers, tablets, phones, and also in new emerging markets like wearables. Google announced in January of 2014 that it had developed the world's smallest glucose sensor. This sort of technology is used in a smart contact that is placed over the eye to transmit data. Google also patented a series of micro cameras that were to be integrated into the smart contact. Smartwatches and other wearable technologies have been around for just a little while now, but it seems no one has been able to actually hit the market just right yet. Almost all wearable technologies need to be tethered at the moment. This just means the technology needs to be connected to a smarter piece of technology, like a phone or a computer. But the next big step in wearable technology will be freeing them from their smarter counterparts. In the comments below, let me know what you think of wearable technology. Will it make our cell phones obsolete? Will it be the next big market? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to TechCrush if you want to keep seeing videos like this. My name is Malcolm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time here on TechCrush.